How do I use Instagram and how have I used it over time? How did I get my business off the ground? How do I balance having a family and a full-time job and my photography business? These are just some of the questions that you guys asked and I'm here to answer them for you. What's up guys? I'm Tony Woodark. I'm a wedding photographer out of Southern California. And today I'm just gonna be answering all the questions that you had on my last YouTube video and on my Instagram. Let's jump into it. This is from Zayn and Zari. What's the guys? Aziz and Zari. Yeah, maybe they're related. Probably not. <laughs> um, okay, this video totally gave me some peace. Thank you. I've been overwhelmed since I'm a newish wedding photographer and there's so much, but I'm hoping it does get easier. My question for you, did you hire anyone to design your website? I know it can get expensive and I don't have it in my budget yet to hire someone to design one for me. What would you suggest I start off with? What Would something like Squarespace still get me clients? Did you ever use Facebook or Instagram ads? Thank you again for this informative video and congrats on your success. Okay, there's a lot of questions in there so let me answer them one at a time. Would I hire someone to design my website? Your website is the last step before someone's gonna reach out to contact you unless they contact you directly from Instagram or Facebook. So it's super important that it's well designed, has good copy on it, is personal, has your best work on it. So if you don't know how to design a website, I would highly recommend finding someone that does and maybe you can do a swap for them. Maybe they need your photos, like they need photos for whatever they're doing, whatever business they run. So maybe you can do a swap or something with them, but I would definitely get some help if you don't know how to do it. Um, you asked about Squarespace, would that work? That's what I use, I love Squarespace. This is not sponsored, but if Squarespace wants to sponsor this, hit me up. But yeah, I've been using Squarespace for the last like three years or so and I love it. When I first started my photography business, I used WordPress and I didn't like how it looked. It looked a little cheesy and outdated and I'm a, like, I have a graphic design degree and so I know how to design. It's just the templates and the flexibility that I had, I didn't like it. I'm sure you can make an amazing website on WordPress. It was, I was just using the web um, templates that they had and I didn't like them. Squarespace was a lot better experience. Um, once you learn how to use it, it was just much more modern and well thought out in my opinion. And so I really highly recommend Squarespace. I think it's really easy to use. If you pick the right template, you can kind of plug and play and just design a really amazing website. Just some things to think about. Make sure you have a good about me. That's a really important page that people kind of neglect because it's really hard to write about yourself. So make sure you have a great about me. Um, make sure you are very clear on your homepage, who you are, what you do, what you provide, and show some of your best work. Uh, make sure you have your prices or the starting prices or some information about the ballpark about where your uh, Photography's at people are nervous reaching out if they have no idea if they can even afford you So I think at least starting prices is important um, and then make sure you have clear buttons throughout the entire website to Flow you from page to page nicely and also to contact you Ultimately, you want people to book you, so when you're thinking about your website, make sure that you have tons of points of contact on there. Um, there's a bunch that we can dig into, but maybe that's another episode. Let's keep going through this question. Did you ever use Facebook or Instagram ads? So that's actually what I do at my job at Hurley. I run the um, Facebook and Instagram ads as one part of my job. So I have a lot of familiarity with Facebook and Instagram, and it's a very powerful tool. You can really hyper-locate and select audiences and um, just target the right people and so it's a really powerful tool. I personally haven't ever used ads though. Um, I've built my business 100% organically for free without ever spending any money on advertising. Something I'm really proud of because it's just, it's been me kind of like getting my elbows dirty. Is that what you say? Getting your elbows dirty? Getting your hands in the dirt? Um, just working for everything I get and we'll get into that later with some of these other questions that I answer. but. Um, I just basically have worked really hard to put my business out there, make sure people see my photography. You can pay through ads to make sure they see your work. It's just a different strategy. Um, I was really cheap at the start of my business and was trying to run a profitable business from the starting because this was to help provide for my family and so I was very careful about every single dollar I spent and so I didn't want to spend money on advertising at the starting. That's the mentality I had going into it and so I've kept that same mentality and I just haven't had to do ads but I believe in them. 
they also make it really easy for you to spend a bunch of money and do it wrong because um, they make a really simple platform that you could just blow a bunch of money. Make sure you find someone who knows what they're doing and you pay them to help you or you do a lot of research before you start spending money on Facebook or Instagram. So that was from Zane and Zari. Thanks for that question. Okay, next question, James Clark. How did Instagram help you and what was your Instagram strategy over time? Basically, Instagram's what started my business. I had a couple thousand followers from just posting photos and um, making friends over time on Instagram and kind of being early on the platform. And so when I started my photography business, I had a couple thousand followers, which was a good base to kind of build off of. I don't have a ton of followers now, but it was enough for some people to see my work. So how did I use Instagram? I think one of the best tactics that I used right when I started um, putting myself out there as a wedding photographer was I would go to bridal shops on Instagram. So I'd literally search for local um, bridal shops, search for them, look at the tagged photos, look for the photo of the bride holding the dress. I just got my dress and I would shoot them a DM. And so that worked really well for me. Um, I basically would shoot them a DM and say something like, here I have one. Congrats, just saw your photo on this location tag. I'm a local photographer. If you guys need engagement photos or someone for your big day, um, let me know. Congratulations either way, marriage is the best. You can see my photos here and I tag myself at Tony Woodark or at my website at TonyWoodark.com. That's it. I mean, and that was a DM that I would send to that person that was holding the dress or whatever photo I saw. And then I would also go to their photo and say, hey, congrats, I just sent you a DM on and comment on their photo because not everyone sees their um, DMs from people that they don't follow. And so I'll say like that one request in the corner on Instagram. So I did that to local wedding shops and it's a numbers game. You gotta do that to a ton of different local wedding shops or dress shops you're gonna do maybe like 100, hit up like 100 brides and you'll hear from a handful of them and then maybe one or two of them will book you. So that might take a couple of weeks for you to find like 100 brides, uh, DM them, uh, hope that a couple reach out, have those conversations, have one or two of them book you. So that takes some hours you know, of work, but it was free. And so I built my business from that and I've made some amazing um, relationships with my clients who are now my friends. Um, I just shot a wedding this last weekend from a couple who I met on Instagram doing that same thing. And now they, I shot their wedding, they love the photos, they referred me, and then now I'm shooting their friend's wedding. And so um, that was one real good tip that I did kind of right at the starting. A lot of people are scared to do that. And I get it, it's not the like, best thing to like just slide into someone's DMs and try to get them to book you. But when you're just getting started and you need something, it's a, it's a great way to make sure that your work is right in front of the person at the exact right time. You know, they just got engaged, they just got a dress, and they're probably ready to book their photographer if they haven't already. So that's just one tip. You can also think about other vendors or other people that you could, um, stock on Instagram and try to uh, find potential couples. People who just went to recent venues and started following them, chances are they followed them because they just booked that venue. So you could go look at who recently followed that venue, find those people, look at their photos, see if their photos have one of them like, I just got engaged or whatever those photos are and you can just leave a comment. I would try to not be too salesy, try to just kind of like be, matter of fact about it. You could provide some sort of benefit to them, you know, like, hey, here's a, a blog that I made of all my favorite vendors in the area and it's your photos and it's on your website and it's all your favorite vendors and your work happens to be displayed there. So that's one trick that um, I know Brie and Steven have used in the past is just like, hey, let me give you a list of all these amazing vendors and you're gonna find out about me through that process. So that's just one way to be a little less salesy in that initial DM. There's a ton of different ways. Just do whatever feels right to you and make it personal and make it real. Don't just try to spam a bunch of people, but um, it is a numbers game, so you have to try to get those numbers up if you actually wanna get bookings through that process. Wow, okay, that was a lot. That was a great question though, and it's something that I talked to a lot of um, photographers about in my mentor sessions because they just are looking for ways to kind of get their business out there. 
I think that's one really good way. You can also go to location tags, um, like a hashtag of a city near you, and go on Monday because the past weekend maybe someone proposed and you can scroll through those photos pretty quick and see if someone's like on one knee or showing off their ring or whatever and you can just DM those couples. It's a little early. Um, you can also just save that photo, wait a couple weeks, go back to your saved photos and then DM them a couple weeks later so you're not like they got married and then now you're trying to get them to book a photographer. Um, so yeah, just those are some simple ideas that you can use. One big one is join Instagram Marketing Secrets, Brian and Steven's Facebook group. They're amazing and they have a trillion tips like the ones that I just mentioned to you. So check those out. Okay, next question. I'm like out of breath. <sighs> Let me catch my breath. Okay, oh, this is a good one. Joel uh, from Steel and Flint Society group asked, how do you balance a full-time job and a photography job with your family? I really met the same place and would love to hear what has helped you to pursue your passion and still have a day job. That's a big one. And I would say my first year doing full-time kind of, not full-time photography, cause I still had a full-time job, but really going all in on photography. I did 13 weddings my first year. And then I did a bunch of other shoots. I did family shoots, newborn shoots, um, some commercial work, um, photos for friends, um, my travel photography. So I did a ton of different uh, photography my first year. I basically worked every single minute of every day in 2017, it was too much. But doing that basically like kicked my business off into this, like immediately started growing pretty rapidly because I just put so much work out there and kind of everyone that I knew, all my friends and all my family knew how passionate I was about this and how much I wanted to be successful in this. And so it kind of just, made the snowball really big from the start and then it was kind of the snowball effect and it grew from there. And so I wouldn't recommend maybe working, like I don't recommend working every single day of every minute or whatever, you'll probably get burnt out, but um, it's gonna take a lot of work up front. Figuring out your website, figuring out your processes, figuring out a client management system like HoneyBook, all of those things take time. If you're more developed and you're just, now you're trying to figure out how to balance it, um, that's awesome. I would say the best tips that I've found for balancing a full-time job at Hurley, balancing my photography career, and then balancing time with my family has been really charging the right amount of money that I'm worth, doing less random photo gigs. So I don't do family photo shoots anymore. I don't do newborn photos. Um, when I do travel photography or that kind of stuff, it's all on film so I don't have to edit the photos and I can just like enjoy the process of shooting and kind of trying out new things. Um, so that's helped. It's basically so, saying no to everything except weddings is what I've been focused on. And then charging the right amount so I can do the right amount of weddings to keep a healthy balanced life. And that's this year is um, 14, next year is gonna be 10. So it's kind of just slowly reducing those while I'm raising my prices to kind of find that sweet spot. Um, I'm comfortable at 14 this year, like I feel good. I'm in the thick of a, a pretty busy time, but um, December will be easier, November will be easier. So um, yeah, there's always kind of light at the end of the tunnel and then next year, 10 weddings is gonna be really comfortable and I feel really good about it. Um, another thing for balance has been really batching my work. So today I'm gonna spend time on Instagram, like planning the photos that I wanna share this week, coming up with some camp caption ideas, um, getting stories ready of sneak peek galleries. So maybe one day or a couple hours at night, I'm gonna spend on getting my social media in place. And another day I'm gonna go, okay, I'm gonna try to edit uh, this wedding for three hours tonight. So from eight o'clock when my kids go to bed till 11 o'clock at night, I'm gonna edit for three hours, have a glass of wine, put on some fast music and go and try to get as much as I can done of that wedding. Next night, maybe do that same thing. Um, I've also been taking days off of work at Hurley so that I can just sit at home and edit for an entire day. I, I find that when I do the same task for an extended amount of time, you get into that groove and that flow and you just kind of get a lot faster. And so when I'm editing especially, that first kind of half an hour, you're kind of clunking around and probably spending too much time in photos, but then you start to get in a groove. And when you get in that groove, you start editing a lot faster and just more efficiently. 
And if I can do that for three hours, that's great. If I can do that for six, eight, 10 hours, that's awesome. And so I've been taking off days work so that I can just focus on like getting a uh, wedding done. So it's like batching my work is what I'd say has been really helpful for um, just balance, I guess. And then just really being purposeful with your time. And it's something I'm totally working on. But like if I'm family time, like get off my phone, I'm guilty. I'm, I'm not perfect at this at all, but like put my phone away. I'm not on Instagram. I'm spending time with my family. If I'm working, I'm working. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not checking emails. I'm not um, watching a TV show or whatever. I'm working. Um, if I'm at Hurley, I'm working at Hurley. And so like just being super focused. Um, and I think those batching my work, being super focused on what I'm doing and just having purpose for every every minute that I'm spending on my business, um, I've just become a lot more efficient. So, and then also reducing the amount of work I do and charging more so that I can just really focus on the making the best possible work I can. Those are my tips for balance. It's a struggle, dude. It's still, it's still hard. I don't know. I'm not perfect by any means, but 2019, which is what we're in, is a lot better than 2018, which was a lot better than 2017. So I'm progressing better each year and I think 2020 is gonna be awesome. So start for that. Okay, let me catch my breath. Let me have a sip of wine. You also asked another question. Do you feel like working at Hurley has helped you with photography or having that as a second job? 100%. I think those two things overlap so much. Like. Um, one thing was, um, at Hurley, we want to focus more on YouTube and we are trying to just grow our YouTube channel and just really invest in that as a, as a channel. Simultaneously, I'm like, Hey, I, I want to do a photography YouTube channel. I learn a lot better by doing. So I started my photography YouTube channel at the same time that we're trying to get better on YouTube. And so at night, I'm studying what people are doing on YouTube. I'm learning how tags work. I'm learning how titling works. Um, I'm seeing how search works and how discovery and all that happens on YouTube. And so I'm learning a ton personally for my photography. I take that knowledge and I apply that on a larger scale at Hurley with um, the things that we're doing. So that's one easy example. Um, I've learned a ton about Facebook and Instagram ads from Hurley. I can take that and apply it to my business. If my business ever slows down and I need more work, I could do Facebook and Instagram ads and I know I could be successful at those. So there's just a lot of good overlap and um, they kind of mutually benefit each other for sure. What has helped you to grow your business when you first started out? I kind of touched on this. That was from Brady Vernick. Um, I touched on this. Instagram was the major one. So my first year, 2017 of business, I did uh, 13 weddings and all of them were from friends, knowing people, um, second shooting for people that I was friends with or our wedding photographer um, that shot my wedding and also um, finding people on Instagram. And so do that DM trick I kind of mentioned earlier. Those are all ways that I kind of kickstarted my business and I worked my butt off and I shared everything along the way. I think um, it's easy to just kind of get hunker down on your computer and work a ton and not share anything. It's also easy to share a bunch, sit on Instagram and not work enough. And so it's finding that balance, but doing a lot of it, it's gonna take a lot more work up front than it is later. Okay, Sam Barker, I need leads, what's your go-to? I would do that Instagram thing. I would, you have to be active. I think people like wanna post a pretty photo, put some hashtags on it, be passive, and then just hope that inquiries come in. If inquiries aren't coming in, that's on you. You need to like actively go out and find couples. Ways to do that are target dress shops, target um, coordinators, target venues, find people that are in the wedding industry, find those couples and reach out to them. Also, be a really good vendor to other vendors. Like on the day of, try to get some sneak peeks of the um, vendors working. Try to make sure that you spend extra time getting photos of those uh, floral arrangements so that you can send the florist the photos and share your work so that those people have work that, um, you know, your beautiful photos that they can share with um, their clients and their future potential clients and you leverage those connections to drive more leads. Um, the first couple years was all my inquiries for the most part came from Instagram and now in 2020, 80% of my inquiries have come from um, wedding vendors. 
And so that's just been a big change in my business is basically I feel like I'm a good vendor and um, work well on a team with other people and people uh, appreciate that. They appreciate that I take good photos, I deal well with the clients, but I also work well as a team and they wanna refer me. And now those referrals have become my bookings and I don't have to worry so much about social media driving my leads. I'm, I'm, they're kind of coming from both angles. Okay. This is gonna be a long video, sorry guys. Um, Emmy had the same question, any advice for a new photographer trying to grow my business? Touched on that. Sherry said, how are you doing overall? I love you, thank you, best question. Um, I'm good, I'm busy, but I, I do that to myself. Like I lay in the bed I make, I make the bed I lay in. I don't know what these phrases are, but um, yeah, this is, this is the life I chose. Like I'm choosing to do photography. I'm choosing to run my own business. Um, I choose to do these educational videos and put out educational articles on my site. Um, I, I, this fuels me. I, um, I guess you could say I'm a workaholic, but I just enjoy all this and this is what kind of energizes me. I enjoy this much more than like sitting down and watching Netflix right now. Um, there's a time and place for that, but I like doing this a lot more than that. So this becomes a priority. So uh, that didn't answer your question. How am I doing overall? I'm doing great. Um, this year is a lot better than last year. Um, and just in terms of balance and the time I've had free time to spend with my family, travel, went to Hawaii this summer, going to Hawaii next month. Um, just been having a lot more fun this year. And so it's been really good. My kids are growing to a really fun age. And uh, yeah, it's just really fun. So yes, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Okay, last one. Bridal shows, expos, in your opinion, are they worth it? Since I'm a newbie, I was contemplating. I've never done one, so I can't speak honestly on that subject. I've heard mixed reviews. People are like, they're terrible. It's a bunch of brides that are just price shopping, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, it could be great. It, you could find awesome couples. I think if you're going to do it, do it well. Have an amazing booth. Um, make sure you're clear with your pricing. Make sure you're getting emails to follow up on leads or driving inquiries and bookings at that bridal show. If you're gonna do it, go all in. If you kind of aren't really feeling it or whatever, try some of these Instagram marketing techniques or try something else. Um, it might not be the only solution for you uh, or it might just be one part of something that you do. Uh, yeah, I think you might have to try it or just move past it, I don't, I don't know. Or I would definitely talk to someone who's done it before and has learned from it um, and get their experience about how much it costs for their booth, how much work it was, how much business they were able to drive from it and see if that's worth it to you. Maybe an Instagram ad or Facebook ad would be more profitable for you and less work, I don't know. It's something you have to consider. I'd also make sure that you're a good salesman and a good face for your brand. If you're not extroverted and uh, you're not great just chatting with random new people and strangers that come up to your booth, maybe an expo isn't the best place for you to drive business. If you're super extroverted and talk really well with people, it could be a great uh, way to try to get new clients. So that's my tip on that. Okay, that was all the questions I have here. I hope that helps. I know this video is way longer than my normal videos. Sorry, I hope there's helpful information in there. I really appreciate these questions. It was super fun to answer these for you and kind of reminisce about the start of my business and how much I've grown and how much work it's been. Um, it's really rewarding for me to just see that progress and just uh, be proud of where I'm at. So thank you guys. If you guys have any more questions, leave those below. Maybe I'll do this again in a month or two or something, or I'll just be happy to answer your comments below. Um, I've got some new videos in the works, so make sure you subscribe, like, comment, do all that fun stuff. But yeah, I uh, appreciate you, thank you.